It's not our intention to ruin its tourism industry, but if you're thinking of holidaying in Samoa, you'd be wise to think again. The brochures show an idyllic South Pacific paradise and promise a welcome as warm as the sun. But that can never be the truth, while a sadistic thug named Lawatiti Tualima lives there. He's Samoa's most dangerous criminal. Remarkably, he spends most of his time in prison. But security there is such a joke, it's no deterrent to Tualima's life of extreme violence. Australian tourists Angie Jackson and Tommy Williams found themselves prey to this man. They're lucky to still be alive. Drenched in the tropical sun, Samoa is a laid-back tourist paradise, a shining jewel in the South Pacific. It's the last place on Earth you'd expect to plead for your life. I was just begging him not to hurt us, begging him not to kill us. I was just like, I can't, this can't be the way we die. I want to see my family again. For two young Australians, it was a holiday that turned to terror. Victims of a sadistic criminal that Samoa just can't seem to keep behind bars. To Alima, any chance of an apology, maybe? You can say sorry. Any chance of that? We have security in the prisons. I mean, this is one case. Mr. Prime uh, Minister, Mr. Yeah, Prime Minister, have, uh, your, your jail has more yeah. holes in it than a block of Swiss cheese. <laughs> That's why I like you, the media. You always want to put uh, Prime Minister at the wrong step. Thank you. Glad to be home and lucky to be alive. Angelina Jackson and Tommy Williams are still dealing with the trauma of their Samoan holiday last September. Seduced by the beauty of the TV tourist ads, it seemed like the perfect place for a fortnight's break. For the most part, our holiday was incredible. Yeah. The small yeah. people, everything you imagine really the nice to be. And for the last few days, Tommy and Angie treated themselves to a tree change at one of the island's most iconic resorts. You know, it's this huge house up, you know, in this tree, and it was peaceful, mm. and yeah, it was um, a really beautiful place to stay. Mm. Almost three storeys up, and in the tangled roots of a 300-year-old banyan tree, it's easy to see just how special and unique this place is. The views here are to die for. For Angie and Tommy, that was almost true. On their very last night, from the jungles below, they were the ones being watched. Not by the local wildlife, but by Samoa's most dangerous man. Completely unaware, and unprepared, their idyllic holiday was about to become a desperate fight for survival. That day, the couple had gone on a game fishing charter to celebrate Angie's 28th birthday. Exhausted, and with a 6 a.m. flight to catch, they settled in for a few hours sleep. Down below, the would-be intruder was armed and preparing to climb the tree and slip inside. I was heading to the shower and I um, looked over and there was a strange man crouched in the corner of our room. And... Um, there must have been an enormous shock. Yeah, it was just that... Um, I guess an instant moment of terror. Mm. All we could see was the illumination from a small phone in our faces. And, you know, we couldn't see him behind that. And that was, that was pretty scary. He said, I need money, where is money? 
And the whole time he was saying for us to be quiet, he would kill us. Terrified, the couple had no option but to comply. But it soon became clear this was more than just a robbery. I could hear him ripping up all our clothes. And then he started to tie Tom up and he gagged Tom and um, then put a, a jumper over his head. At that moment, I just felt like that was it. I knew that, you know, this was going downhill really quickly. Angie and Tommy didn't know it then, but they were at the mercy of Lawatiti Tuolima, Samoa's most notorious criminal, a convicted rapist who'd been on the run from jail for a month. <sighs> and so then he turned his attention to you, Angie? Uh, yeah, once Tom was completely helpless, he um, came over to my side of the bed and... Um, like, I felt his hand touch my back and... Uh, he asked me why I was crying. And I said, because I was scared. And um, he tied my hands up, but just my hands. Um, and um, yeah, that's when I was raped. You know, I was just so angry laying next to Angie when all of this was happening. You know, it just. You, you were laying right next to her all this time? Yeah. Yeah. And not being able to do anything, you know, for the one you love, that was tough. You know, to help her. But in the darkness of the room, Tuolima was about to make a crucial mistake. Intent on stealing Angie's iPad, he turned it on and the light from the screen gave him away. He might be a monster, but he's a stupid one. So um, I just lay there and studied his face. Mm. So really, his greed got the better of him? Yep. Definitely. Absolutely. Mm. Angie now had a clear description for police, if they could make it out alive. He asked Angie, why shouldn't kill us? And I was just begging him not to hurt us begging him not to kill us. Mm. And I was just like, I can't, this can't be the way we die. I want to see my family again. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> when you walked down here, could you hear anything? No, I didn't hear anything. Just but luck was on Tommy and Angie's side. And, um, At 3 a.m., with their taxi waiting, and no sign of the couple, resort manager Victoria Reopena went to investigate. It would have been quite dark still, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's really dark. We just heard her calling out our name. And it was like, it's like an angel's voice. We were just like, thank God someone knows that we're here. Startled, Tuolima punched her three times and ran off into the night. And first I turned on the light and and I see them tied up. And Angelina is really crying. And my tears were coming down as well because I'm scared and I feel sorry for what happened to them. And she untied us and uh, she saved us, I guess. If Victoria hadn't have come, we would have been coming home in body bags. The attack on two tourists has sent shockwaves across Samoa. The issue isn't just to Alima, but this place. Tafia Gata Prison, on the outskirts of the capital, Apia. Overcrowded and poorly run, escapes here are commonplace. Believe it or not, this is the high security wall at the front of Samoa's main jail. This is the place where Lawatiti Tuolima managed to escape not once or twice, but at least three times in eight months. That's not surprising when you consider that the welcome sign to this place warns that people who break in will be prosecuted. It also talks about safer communities, which we know is just not true. 
You see, for this prison and for Samoa's worst criminals, it's easier to get out of than get into. When, when you found out afterward that this was a hardened criminal who was serving a long jail term already, mm. who'd escaped from jail, well, what did you make of it? I was pretty angry. Yep. Really angry. If he hadn't been allowed to escape from prison, this wouldn't have happened to us. Not only is security lax, but there's a culture of letting even the most violent prisoners out on weekend parole. The last time Tuolima escaped, he and another prisoner hacked Chinese businessman Quan Hui San with a machete. We tracked the victim down at his shop, not far from the jail. Go in the back cut here and use the rope from the back, hold me my neck and they cut the second one from here, down there, no teeth. Your bottom teeth, they smashed them? Yeah, <laughs> no teeth, down there, no teeth, brunch, all finished, <laughs> gone. For a place that relies on tourism, there's been plenty of noise about Tuolima's escapes and such a brazen attack on two holidaymakers. But for the Samoan Prime Minister, it's just one of those things. Well, I, uh, I am sad uh, that it has happened to them and my heart goes out uh, to the couple. But if you happen to be uh, out in a, a place where you ought not to be, then problems can happen. You've been to the place. It's very isolated but, but in hang the on. forest. Well, Prime Minister, it's only 30 minutes' drive from here, from where we're sitting. This is a place that's featured in the Samoan tourist yes, brochures. Yes, yes, uh, that's right. But are you saying that people should not go there as tourists? Well, they should be very, very um, careful. Prime Minister, over the last seven years, Australia has given you more than $15 million under the Samoa-Australia Police Partnership. Uh, that's an awful lot of money. Over $2 million a year from Australia, just on security and safety, did for, you... seven, for seven years. But where's uh, all that money gone if you can't even build a fence? There are fence there. Have you gone and seen the, the prison? Yes, the fence is pathetic, sir. Yeah. Well, that is why we have decided to shift uh, and build a new jail. So should tourists stay away? in the meantime, be before that prison is I built. don't think uh, tourists will stay away. My message is stay where it is safe here in town. So what do you think justice looks like? Too traumatised to return to Samoa, Angie and Tommy had been due to give evidence by video link, with the confronting prospect of being cross-examined by Tuolima himself. The chance of this bloke being able to ask you questions in the witness box, that, that's disturbing, isn't it? I'm not really happy about it, but it's the legal process in Samoa and we just have to respect that, I guess. Just have to tough it out. Yeah. yeah. But in the end, when his day in court came, Lawatiti Tuolima changed his plea to guilty on all seven charges. Hey, Tuolima. Tuolima. Why were you smiling when you pleaded guilty to rape? Now facing many more years in jail, it all seemed to be one big joke. You're very brave, mate, with that thing over your head. The best that we can hope for is that the prison conditions are improved, the security is improved, so mm -hmm. that when he is put away for the rest of his life, mm -hmm. he stays there. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's been a long and traumatic ordeal. But nine months after being brutally attacked, Angie and Tommy are free to start rebuilding their lives. <laughs> Given the state of that prison, you, you don't think it's safe for other tourists at the moment? No. no. Definitely not. And, you know, the governing bodies for that prison should be ashamed with themselves because not only do they endanger the lives of foreign tourists, but they're endangering the lives of their own community. Mm -hmm. And the Samoans don't deserve that. Mm -hmm.